Om Shanti and good evening. Yesterday I had recounted some of the factors arising from the self and our relationship with others and also from circumstances besides our own confusion and our habit which are the causes of our discontent now and then. And I had stopped at the point when I was mentioning that what Baba says in order to divinize ourselves, spiritualize ourselves, or to eliminate the negativity from us, that there are 16 powers or 16 arts. Elsewhere we have mentioned 16 arts of life, but that's from different point of view. But I am mentioning it from another point of view. And I had mentioned just two of them, and at that point I stopped because the limitation of time that was given to me was the interruption. Now, just to take up the link, I would like first of all to mention those two points which I had mentioned yesterday, and then I take it from the third. Firstly, I had said that one of the things is to stop, stop our action. And Baba says that we should stop negative thinking, stop our negative impulses or impulses, stop old sanskaras coming into play, stop all leakages, stop all wastages, and so on. And I also mentioned that in one of the murlis, Baba said, Samapti hi sampurnata ki nishani hai. When we have stopped them completely, all what I have mentioned, that would be the sign of your perfection, your total fulfillment, your state of beatitude. So he has given this much importance to this art of stopping. The second one I had mentioned was to move or to make others move or to put to work chalana or chalna in Hindi as we call it. And Baba generally refers it in the context of starting our journey, pilgrimage of remembrance, positive thinking, Sudarshan Chakra, churning, spiritual effort or service. And I had given the example of aeroplane, how when it starts, then moves at a speed, then it takes off, it begins to fly. So that Baba says that to make efforts, rapid efforts, last so fast, and then begin to fly like angels. And make others fly. I had also said that this also means to let things go. Dira Chodna, as they say. To, to make it, to take it easy, to be light. For example, sometimes it so happens that someone has talked to us in very rough manner, impolite manner, discourteous manner. And this has, this was in bad taste. We did not like it. Now, let it go. Let past be past. Forget it. Chalana, this is called to let it go, let go. So this also comes in that, when Baba says, let past be past, forget about it. Now, what happens generally is, that where we have to start, we stop, and where we have to stop, we start. That is the cause of the trouble. Therefore, we get discontent. Now, supposing we face a situation, I had mentioned certain situations, now negative thoughts come up in our mind. When that situation presents itself to our mind, negative thoughts enter because the door is opened. And when the negative thoughts begin to come, then instead of starting the Sudarshan Chakra or positive thinking or starting churning of Baba's knowledge and so on, I begin to start negative, negative thoughts, which I should actually stop. So you will find that where I should stop the negative thinking from entering further into my place, I let them 
where I should stop, I let them. And where I should let them, I stop. So instead of the good things coming to me, for example, you would find that if the teacher of our class says that if someone has not been good enough to us, we should tolerate. Now instead of uh, agreeing by it because these are Baba's teachings, we say once I tolerated, second time I tolerated, thrice I tolerated, but now I cannot tolerate anymore. So that means I am stopping toleration and starting negative thinking. So naturally when this happens, I will have disturbance of mind, I will be restless and then I will be discontented or dissatisfied with my own self. So you know, there should actually have been stoppage of leakage, stoppage of wastage, stoppage of negative th thoughts But I on the other, and I should have started on my pilgrimage of remembrance. Remember Shiv Baba or thought of the present Sangam Yuga that I am a yogi and I have to become an angel. I don't welcome these negative thoughts. I should have stopped them. But I start them. They take more speed than my positive thoughts take speed. So therefore I say it is a power or it is an art which you should apply on proper timings. So these two I had just mentioned. Now I take the third one. The third one is to control. The first one was to stop, the second one to start. But not, now is to control, not to make it so fast, to lower the speed. Or if the speed is lower, to make it more. Controlling means either gearing up, either you increase the speed or you lower the speed. So keeping some kind of a balance. So this one is controlling. For example, Baba says, speak less. He does not say, stop speaking altogether. On certain days, for your self-improvement, you may do it. But if you totally stop speaking, then you are not using a particular instrument for the service. Instead of speaking knowledge to someone, Baba said in your talk, you should be knowledgeful. In your relationships, you should be loveful. Instead of talking knowledge to others, when I did not have knowledge, I was doing too much talking. And when I got the knowledge, I become totally silent. This is wrong, you know. So now is the time to speak knowledge to others, to give Baba's message, to spread it worldwide, to glorify Baba. So instead of doing that, when I was abusing others, talking nonsense, I was busy about nothing and talking, you see, all rubbish. At that time, I was talking too much. And now if I totally stop, it's not the sign of wisdom. It's not yogi way of life. So Baba says, speak less. So how can you do this unless you control what to speak, what not to speak, when to speak, when not to speak. Sometimes silence is golden, speech is silver. And sometimes speech may also be golden and silence may be silver. Where you are required to speak, you must speak. I think when Christ was required to speak, when he was called to explain what he is saying about the kingdom of heaven, what kind of kingdom he is talking about, at that time he did not speak. He was totally silent. Maybe even if, even if after explanation, they had made the mind, made up the mind and if he was to be hanged, it would be a different thing. But at least he should have explained what he meant. But when we read the New Testament, we find that he kept silent. He did not explain. So I think th this was something which he should have done. At certain things. <laughs> But now we have to use the power of let go because that time is over. So, when we say that we should speak less, this is a power of control, you see, of this particular organ. Similarly of others. And then this also includes keeping balances, such as of love and love. If you just when Baba says be loveful in your relationship. It does not mean that you should not balance it with law. At times you require to balance it with law. If you are so much loveful, people may ride on your shoulders, on your head. You know. So at some time you have to show your face that you mean it. So therefore you have to act as, a, as an actor in a drama. You have to keep many kinds of balances which Baba has said, one of them, as I said, is law and love. 
So keeping the balances and observing the control, this is the third art or the third power. Baba has talked of so many kinds of balances and of controlling so many things. Now, when I say of controlling, now it also means include so many other things. For example, to make things light. When there is some accident, for example, or some serious illness, something untoward happens, a certain adverse circumstances take place in our life. Baba said, you considered that instead of, they say, I mean, considered as just a, what would you say, a thorn as compared to a cross. Suli se kanta samjho, as Baba say. So how can you control? When there are certain events, you just make them feel light. Instead of considering as too much, you know, there are some people when there is a little bit of pain, they begin to cry. But others control it. And they don't show it on their face. They don't cry. So, this they can do only when they have control over themselves and they th make light of the whole situation. That I may have perhaps got worse punishment because of my past actions, but because of Baba's help, I have just got only a fraction of it, only a small part of it. So, this makes you feel light. This is a kind of controlling. The the accident is the the enormity of the accident is the same, two persons. But one is making it small, the other is making it a mountain of a molehill, as they say. So, you have to control and make things appear light. This is also a kind of controlling. Then another factor which Baba tells us how to control, how to make things lighted. I have done it innumerable number of times, Baba says. When there is a difficult situation, you are facing it. If you think, oh, I am crushed under the weight of this difficult situation, then you feel all the more heavy. If on the other hand, you think that this has repeated a number of times, it is nothing new, as Baba says. I have been able to cross it a number of innumerable number of times with Baba's help. So that kind of attitude will make that event, that grave situation, appear very light. Then when Baba says that you should think Baba is with me, whenever there is any problem, you are faced with odds, difficult situations. If you think Baba is with me, the situation is no doubt grave, it is very serious. But if you just think it's serious, you become nervous. Then you have fear, you feel scared. You can't face the situation. You lose your energy. And the mind also does not have clarity. You can't face it with all your strength and all your stamina. So when you think that Baba is with me or I am under the umbrella of protection of Baba, then that very situation appears to be very light. So this is also controlling or balancing. Then one of the things under controlling I said was to make things appear light. The other is on the, the reverse of it, to make it appear heavy, serious and uh, very weighty instead of light. Take, for example, Baba's Murli. When you listen to any sentence, any statement in Baba's Murli, if you make light of them, then you can't realize its depth. If, on the other hand, you think that every statement of Baba is like a precious jewel, it is. it has much more in it. If you give more weight to what Baba has said, then you get something out of it. You get more power, you get that treasure of Baba's knowledge. So, controlling or balancing. Now, this is also included in that. That, for example, is Sangam Yug. Some people say, if it is Sangam Yug, so what? Whatever happens to the whole of the world will happen to me also. When we explain it to people that destruction is quite at hand and that they should take to yogi way of life, they will say, oh, whatever happens to the whole world will also be a part of it. On the other hand, there are few as Baba was saying, out of millions only, the rosary is only of a few, of 108 only. So what is the reason? Because they give so much weight to Baba's statement that this is Sangam Yuga. 
this is the last period last phase of our last life that destruction is quite at hand that we should have a yogi way of life and they give so much weight to what we will be having in heaven or in the golden age world so their way of thinking is such that they put more meaning into all these statements they therefore feel enriched feel strengthened they get strength out of those statements and then they begin to make good efforts fast speedy efforts therefore they are ahead of many others who are not making that much progress the reason being that they make light of all these statements so where they should make light they make heavy if if there is a small trouble they become very heavy and if baba says something which they should make, give weight to they feel light so this is the reverse that gives disappointment and dissatisfaction either way so how much we will be gaining by making these efforts in this last phase of our last life of this sangam yuga if you just think over it how much is this then baba says you will feel so intoxicated oh baba is giving us so much how kind is baba to us how gracious if on the other hand you say you don't give that much of value to it so if there will be health wealth and happiness so what then you don't feel that much of enthusiasm that much of uh, i mean intoxication so this was the third one now the fourth one the fourth one is chhod dena to give up to give up or to renounce this is also very essential for making rapid progress what we should renounce you know in the copper age people have been renouncing their hearth and home and their family life and going to jungles what they should have renounced they didn't and what they what there was no need of renouncing they renounced so they did the wrong thing and therefore the end result was disappointment they did not achieve mukti or jeevan mukti because they didn't actually know renunciation is always there you tell me the life of a single person who does not renounce those person who were participating in the freedom struggle of our country they renounce certain things the comforts of life a scientist doing research in his laboratory he renounces for some time the the family life and is busy with his experiments so for doing anything great or even anything ordinary you give up something and take to another you renounce something in order to attain another it is a question of give and take giving is a part of life but the question is what you have to give up that you must understand and you must give it up at the right moment everyone has to give up the body but if before be giving up the body i don't give it up mentally which is what detachment means if i don't detach myself from the body and become dead in this from my past life marjiva as we call it and that i have taken a new life and i am dead from my old if i don't die that way then everyone has to die one day so i have to give it up the attachment with the body before actually i am finally to give up the body so this sense has to be there giving up renouncing now many things many uh, statements of baba's murli you will find they come under this head for example baba says kalyugi maryada the iron age it maryada i say i am working as a manager in a factory if i don't take food uh, you see cook from outside i just take only the one which i myself prepare what will people say they will criticize me now if i do not do the rituals which people in the bhakti cult do then they would say i am not a bhakta i am not a religious man they would laugh at me so this kind of the worldly tradition which i have been following following others like dumb driven cattle i have been doing now give up that kalyugi maryada baba says these iron age kind of things which make you not obey baba obey shrimat but they you obey other people the human beings so you have to give up you are that kind of shyness or hesitation which makes you do certain wrong things rather than give up what baba asks you to do you give up baba's orders and you obey the orders of others which are very contradictory to it so naturally the result will be frustration so this giving up 
our renunciation. Under this comes that our energy maryada, our attachments, our craftiness, our vices, our the old sanskaras and so on. Uh, body consciousness, all these. You know, many of the teachings of Baba, if you, when, when you read the Murlis, come under this. If we are not doing it, naturally we are not satisfied with our progress and the dissatisfaction is bound to be there. No one can help. Then when I say give up, give up also means a different, uh, it has also a different meaning. Sometimes it so happens you go on doing an effort endlessly. You put all your energy, you spend lot of time, but nothing happens. Sometimes Baba says give it up. Why you waste your time? You just go on giving knowledge to somebody who is not listening to you. Baba says even a scorpion knows where to put his sting, you know. He also, the scorpion also has that kind of sense. Where there is soft, only that place he stings you. But you as a human being do not know, you are going on doing work on somebody who is not paying any attention, who does not understand the value of these jewels. You are throwing pulse before a swan, these jewels before a monkey. So, Matha Marna Chordo Baba says, give up this long effort. Otherwise, you are wasting time. If you don't do this, then you will face disappointment. Oh, I spend hours and hours with this man, days together, months I spend with this man, but he is like a stone, a heavy stone, he does not move at all. So, this was bound to happen because you did not know the person. Baba says you must be knowledgeful, you are not knowledgeful. On the other hand, you, you are throwing away knowledge rather than being knowledgeful in that sense. Knowledgeful also means that you must recognize the worth of a person, the ability of a person, the, uh, whether that person has any, they say you can take a horse to water, but you cannot make a drink. If that horse has no thirst, how can you make a drink knowledge? So give it up. And this also means that you should loosen the grip. Give it up on certain things. And then certain other desires, for example. In many Murlis, Baba said, you must give up all these desires for name and fame and for all these worldly desires. Have only this desire to become complete, perfect. Then the fifth one is to acquire, to inculcate, dharan karna, as they say. Now, when we attain knowledge, if we listen to Murli, but don't acquire knowledge from it, don't imbibe the quality in us, we are just listening only. Listening is a good action. But listening, you see, unless and until it accompanies the acquisition of knowledge and that you imbibe the qualities in you, then only it gives you satisfaction. Otherwise, there will, there, you know, there are people who come to class daily, almost daily. They listen to Baba's Murli. Baba says they are Neminath. Neminath means they are just regular bhaktas only. Not acquiring those good qualities in themselves. So, we have to pay our attention to acquiring things, inculcating in us, imbibing those virtues. If we don't absorb them, somebody takes the food, but his system does not absorb the nutritious part of it, doesn't get any energy, spends so much on nutritious things. People ask him to take such and such articles of food. He spends a lot on them, but he is not benefiting. Naturally, the result will be disappointment. So, what you have to do is have that power of absorption, acquisition, inculcation of knowledge, of virtues. Then the sixth one is to feel shy, to have hesitation. That is not to do certain acts, to refrain from certain acts. I am not asking to stop them, but there are certain kinds of things, you know, very often we remember Baba would touch his chin. He would say, children, beloved children, would you not mind doing things which are proper for royal children and refrain from doing such things which defame your Baba, my beard, he would say. He had no beard. He was clean shaved. But he would generally put his hand over here and say, would you not just think of respect, Baba's respect? 
the beard sometimes is considered as a sign of respect. So Baba would generally say that unless and until we have a sense of shame, we are Brahmins, we are yogis. If we just begin to abuse someone or use certain words which are not yogi-like or indulge in certain activities, people would say these are in white saris and white dress with the badge here. They are BKs. If we don't have sense of shame, then certain things which our old sanskaras compel us to do, we cannot refrain from. So, shyness, hesitation at times is a negative thing, is not a virtue. But at other times, it is a virtue. When we are required to have that sense of shame and not to do certain things, not to indulge into certain things, because we are yogis different from others, then we are lacking something. Then again, there will be disappointment. So we have to have this kind of sankoch, as they call it, or lajja, as they call it, sense of shame, as we call it. Hesitate from these. Refrain from these. We give up all the bad habits, all the vices, when we have actually the sense of shame. You just try to analyze how transformation took place in your life. When you came in touch with this institution, and you saw that other people are giving up these bad things. You like this society, like this, the company of these people. And when you see the other person is peaceful, not talking very loudly, and just uses very polite, very courteous words. And I, on the other hand, just shout. And sometimes I lose my temper. Then you have a sense of shame. And then you transform yourselves. Next time I am not going to do that. So isn't it that shyness or shame, or refraining from certain things is a tool for transformation, spiritual transformation. So we have to use this tool for transformation. If at times we you don't, I mean, have this, then the result would be disappointment. Then the other one is to make experiment, to do experiments. For example, when you have knowledge, when you give knowledge to others, Others say, oh, now this was my question. Today it is solved. What you have said is very correct. I was searching this kind of knowledge. It's for the first time that you have given me so much within this limited time. Then sometimes it so happens, I also am reminded of the worth of knowledge. Otherwise I take it easy. As the time passes, when I first came to knowledge, this knowledge was very valuable to me. But now, by habit, I perhaps lost that sense of value. When others say, oh, it has tremendously changed my life, this brother, this sister gave me that knowledge. It totally gave me a new concept of the reality, of the truth. And that brought a total transformation in me. I was a short tempered man, but this person told me that, how can I just transform myself? And now I can assure you, I have control over my anger. So when that person says that, then I understand that what Baba says, how much value it has from the point of view of transformation. So this is an experiment of knowledge. Similarly, experiment of peace. When I am peaceful, and this is what Baba said that in this yogi way, love, yogi life, in this tapasya year, you have not only to be yogi, but also you have to make prayog, to make experiments. Others should feel that you are peaceful. Others should feel that you are blissful. Others should feel that you are loveful. So that kind of experimentation on others would give you more happiness. It would be a kind of reassurance to you that you are on the proper track, that you are really making progress, that you have attained something worthy. So this will again give you further enthusiasm to take more speed. This is essential in life. Otherwise, slackness, indolence, laziness overtakes us. We take it as a routine. But when we know that this is something very powerful, very magical, very miraculous, so wonderful, people saying this, that this institution is doing so good work, so on, don't we feel happy at that time that we are in this institution? This man is new to the institution, he is praising this institution, where we already are for so many years. This happiness, Baba says, is, is the food for the soul. The soul feels strengthened. This also is a means of satisfaction. When you know that in your treasure there are so many kinds of diamonds and gems and jewels, isn't it a sign of, atten sign of attainment? 
so happens with this so one of the powers is or the ways is for to satisfaction is you make experiments give it to others the benefit to others then another is to postpone postponement of action you are not stopping the action but you are also not starting the action you are also not controlling the action you are not giving up the action but you are postponing it postponing the action for some time take for example in this conference dadi ji when she spoke when she addressed the audience on the very day of inauguration opening day she said uh, because there were many newcomers who had come for the first time so dadi ji said can you not observe celibacy at least for one year if you had asked them to be celibate throughout their life they would have thought it's very difficult that they are not going to do this but if you ask them to postpone it for a year you know the coming of a new child at least postpone it for a year so they will say all right dadi ji the head of this spiritual institution for our own betterment is giving us a good advice and uh, at least for a year we should be able to do it why not let's try so this postponement baba says you you do so many things you like to eat so many things you full fond of so many other things but baba says in golden age you will have enough of them more than enough so in this life you have to be had having very simple life not very gaudy life not luxurious life not too much of comforts in your life you have to use your money for the service and so on so can't you postpone it because it is only 200 2000 ad how much is the time can't we postpone all these just for a few years for a decade for 10 years or so and then we will have so much of it so when you want to give up something the comforts of life the luxuries of life and to take to simple life if you think that you are not giving it up forever but just postponing it for some time then you feel it easy the transformation comes easy and the satisfaction therefore results from that so this kind of postponement but there are other things which you must not postpone you must properly use this postponing you always postpone there are certain things included in your schedule you are not able to keep your schedule certain things you are able to fulfill some appointment some work you are able to do according to your time schedule others are left you postpone them we always this use this postponement but there are certain things which cannot be postponed this is yogi life this is sangam yog if you say that i will become celibate after say 10 years if you postpone it that way then you can't attain anything at all baba says you will have to shed tears of blood so this kind of postponement they say procrastination or postponement is the thief of time so we we will be losing time if we are postponing things that way and there is a saying in hindi kal naam kal ka hai if you say i will do it tomorrow who knows whether you will be living tomorrow or not tomorrow you may be dead so they say death keeps no calendar you can't say that tomorrow date tomorrow in the calendar is that you will be alive where is the assurance so don't postpone these things that i will start my tapasya work from tomorrow or from first of april first of april fools will only start tapasya year because on first of april first they are fools let me start it from today not from tomorrow so don't postpone good things in life do them immediately shigram to shubham whatever is good you must start immediately don't postpone them so to do things immediately not to give time gaps to postpone because otherwise you know there are so many murlis of baba on albela pan laziness carelessness postponement is a sign of carelessness it's a sign of laziness it's a sign of indifference it's a sign of not paying attention or importance to important things in life that is what postponement is 
Under this word, word postponement, so much is hidden, which is negative. So don't think it is just a small thing. I told you tomorrow I am going to take it up in right earnest, with full speed. So if today I sleep over it, then how does it matter? Because tomorrow I will make double the speed. It does matter. Because in the first instance, tomorrow may be certain adverse circumstances. You do not know. Secondly, if you are going to start with double the speed from tomorrow, and if you do something to do today, and then also start it with double the speed tomorrow, this today's work will be addition. So this will repeat. It will be recurring times you will be getting. Because this world re drama repeats. So this today, this instant, this moment has its own value. You don't understand the value of time if you postpone things. Pardon? No, that is different. He is saying that someone may be feeling tired. Though Baba says that meditation also removes our fatigue. Fatigue also sometimes is due to mental reasons. Sometimes, of course, due to physical reasons. If I am feeling sleepy because I worked hard, of course, let me take rest. I am not saying that. Because if you become sleepless, then you have to take pills. And then you may say, that this guy gave us a class. He asked us not to postpone. So there was a breakdown in my health because I was tired and I did not care for that. Please care for that. But then, if you just meditate and feel light, I think less amount of sleep would be enough. Would That would do. Thank you. Then, Baba therefore has been giving us this slogan. Ab nahi to kabhi nahi, now or never. He has put so much emphasis on this. Whenever we, we would write a message for the people, Baba would say, but where have you put this? Now or never. We would mention, Shiv Baba says, my beloved children, you can get from me the complete inheritance of purity, peace and prosperity. Okay. Baba will say, all right. But then we have not added at the end, now or never. I don't give my inheritance all through the Kalpa. I give it only in Sangam Yuga. And if they don't come now, they cannot come. So add this sense of urgency of the time. Use these three, four words, now or never. So in this effort, when we make spiritual efforts, we will always remember now or never. Then another is Samalena, to merge in ourselves to accommodate in ourselves. Take for example, someone praises us, showers praise on us from the stage. Jagdish Bhai does this, Jagdish Bhai did that, so on and so forth. He has this good quality, that good quality and so on. Now, it may be genuine, it may just be a kind of a flattery. Maybe perhaps it is more flattery because I am not having those qualities. It may not be genuine. But, even if it were genuine, I should not feel intoxicated. Because otherwise, if someone does not do this, or if I do something good next time and somebody does not praise me for that, I feel disappointment, dissatisfaction. So, you require an art of, I mean, what would you say? Samalena, how would you translate? Pardon? Merge it in your mind. I mean, not, it shouldn't go into your head very much, so that you get puffed up. Not that sort of feeling. But you are, you have that equanimity. Your mind is not up and down. If somebody, I mean, talks in negative terms about you, you feel angry. And if on the other hand, he uses superlatives for you, you think that you are at the top of the world. Not that kind of feeling. But you, a yogi has equanimity. And this is what I mean by saying that we should have this ability, the art, samalena. Both kinds, actually. The praise as well as the opposite of it. The contempt or the censure, some kind of a sarcasm or criticism. Someone talking ill or negative about you. You don't mind, you just check yourself whether you have all these bad qualities. Like a yogi, you must eliminate them. And if you don't have, then you keep satisfied that uh, whatever this person is saying, it is his business, dirty business. Why should I bother about it? Then another is Prataksh Karna, to glorify. This is always we do. Never would you find a person who is either not praising somebody. Maybe Dadiji's, 
may be other seniors, may be someone in the class or whosoever. Every human being in his lifetime, a number of times, talk good of some people, high of some people, who, are, who according to that person are praiseworthy, adorable. So, always someone is glorifying someone. But whom to glorify, actually? Because the other day also Baba said, no one is perfect. Remember only me. Act only on my advice. So the only one who is really adorable, who does not have even a, the least of negativity or incompleteness, is Shiv Baba. So therefore, even if some people try to glorify you, you should say it is all because of Shiv Baba. Really it should come from your mind. There should be a feeling of realization. I was a worthless person, worth quarries, worth not even a pence. Baba made me worth pound, as Baba has been using this phrase very often. He made me whatever people think I, I have, which is a worth in me. Because It is because of Baba's grace, Baba's blessings. So at that time, I should really think of Baba, feel, you see, my gratitude towards him, and tell people from the bottom of my heart, if the heart has a bottom, that it is really Baba's work which Baba is doing. Some people say the heart is bottomless. So glorification of Baba, one but none. That should be the motto of our life. Then another is, when we do action, there is a feeling. Action can't be done without a feeling. Always you will find every action is accompanied, it's not mechanical action, it's a human action. And there is no human being who does not have any emotions, any feelings. Our action is never divorced from our feelings. It always is accompanied with some feelings, positive or negative, good or bad. Feelings of elation or feeling of disappointment. Some kind of feeling is always there. So sometimes it so happens that you feel that you are being compelled to do it. You are doing it per force. Somebody is putting pressure on you. You are under someone's pressure. So therefore you don't have your own pleasure, but pressure. So that thing becomes not a means of pleasure, but a means of pressure. So when you do something, suppose the teacher in the class says, Dear brother, can you do this Baba's service? Now if I say no, she may not like it. But I feel that I, I have, uh, I mean, I don't want to do it. Maybe that I am not in a mood to do it, or whatever be the other reasons. I do it out of compulsion, with that kind of feeling. So that work does not have that much of value. Alright, even if you are doing it, once you have accepted to do it, do it with pleasure. Think it is Baba's work. After all, you are doing it, but its value will become less by half, if you have that feeling of compulsion. If on the other hand you are think, you think that you are participating in a good cause, doing some service to mankind, that it is really your privilege. Somebody had faith in you and asked you to do it. That it's a pleasure for you. Why not? I will do it. You see, since you asked me to do it, oh, keep on asking me this kind of thing. This life is for service. So when you do it with that feeling, then you will have satisfaction. If on the other hand you do it but under compulsion, under pressure, then you lose that player. And also the reward for that action, you lose that much of it. But sometimes you have to think that there is compulsion. Sometimes a person goes to attend another marriage party. Baba says you have to go it because you live in a family. Your brother is getting married. If you don't go, they say, that Brahma Kumari is giving wrong teachings. So you, per force, under compulsion of circumstances, because of your physical relationship, according to drama, willingly, 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 you have to go, you attend. So don't do it with player. At that time, don't have a sense of player. At that time, think that you are under compulsion to do it. If on that occasion you think, yeah, it's a player because I get so many sweets to eat, and it's a happy gala occasion. You see, we are good dress, this necktie and this and that, you know. And people think that he, here come a gentleman, they welcome you and all that. So at that time you 
even if you just smile and all that, you act in the drama, but in your mind you feel, what have I to do? Remember Baba all the more and think, Baba, it is only because of your service, your teachings, but under compulsion I am here. And then the opposite of it is to do with player. Previously I was saying with under compulsion, not to do under compulsion and to do under compulsion. Now I am taking the next one to do with player. Whenever is the yajna service, you know, for example, as I mentioned earlier, and whatever else, spiritual efforts, for example, what we are doing, this yogi way of life, the kind of dress, the kind of food, so many things. You might have had different kind of, uh, I mean, habits earlier, which you are now changing. Don't feel that you are under compulsion you are doing it. Not only yajna service, but all these, what you are doing now have a sense of happiness. And Baba says, nothing like happiness. No food, no diet like happiness. Happiness is the greatest diet. So whatever you do, have that enthusiasm, have that happiness. Then the other is to do with concentration. Whatever you do, do it heart and soul. Put your all into it. Don't do it in a haphazard way or half-hearted manner. Leave half things undone do only half of the things, give up things unfinished, or in a very shabby manner, excellence, perfection should be your goal. Whatever you do, do it nicely. And put the whole of yourself in it, all your energy, all your attention, and most of all, your concentration. Because if your mind is not put into it, then you are not making full efforts. Not only you have to be knowledgeful, peaceful, blissful, but attention full. Pay your full attention. It should be concentration. So ekagrata, concentration is something very important. Whatever you do at that time, your mind should not wander away. It should not be scattered. It should be focused on what you are doing. It is the yogi way of life. So then you get the full result of it. And the result would be satisfaction. If you are not putting the whole attention into it, the result would be only half or less than half. And how can you have full satisfaction? You can't. And Baba says, when you have this full concentration, then only you will be able to destroy your past karmic account. This will be such a blaze, such a kind of a deep uh, burning fire, which will uh, end all your past karmic account, your vices, whatever is left of them. So this is very important in yogi way of life. Then the other is intention. Always you will find that whatever you do, you have a motive. You have an intention. Somebody may not have actually murdered, but he may have had the intention to murder. The court takes notice of this and gives punishment to the person. You are not successful in actually murdering this person, but you got this weapon, you made the whole plot, and you were involved in the whole scheme. You paid money to the murderers, you were a part of the whole thing, you know. You had the intention to murder, but maybe there were some adverse circumstances. You had to cancel your plot, and you could not put it to completion. But the, if the intention is there, you have to be given some punishment. Similarly, even if you are not able to do something, but you have good will, good wishes, good intentions. Say, for example, you give some money for a good cause, for Baba's work. What is the intention? Is the intention that the teacher should say that this person is a very cooperative soul? You want to be adored in the presence of all? If this is the intention, then the reward for it will be much less. Your intention should be, that should come out of a feeling of generosity. For good cause. I am also a part of the society. If the society becomes good, I also get the benefit. I can't be completely happy unless the whole society is happy. So it is, I am duty bound to make little sacrifices, even if uh, I call it sacrifice. Otherwise, it's not a sacrifice, because I get benefit out of it, today or tomorrow. So if my intention is that I am doing it for Baba's work, for the well, well-being of the whole mankind, and it's my duty to do it, so on and so forth, that is the proper noble intention. If on the other hand, my intention is, if I do service, People will say he is a very serviceable soul, so on and so forth. 
that intention is not that good quality. So is the case with all our actions. All actions carry with them some kind of a motive, some kind of int intention. We have to check up our intention, otherwise the results will not be full. Then is the sthiti. Whenever you do some action, you have a mental stage. What is your stage when you are doing that action? At that point of time, when you are giving knowledge, for example, you are giving one week course to some soul. What is your state? Are you yourself soul conscious? Are you linked to Baba? Are you ha having good wishes and goodwill towards that soul? Are you really loveful to that person? If that is your state, then you are re really doing your job. If on the other hand, your stage is empty, you are neither linked to Baba, nor you are having soul conscious stage, nor you, you have goodwill towards that being, you are just doing it because it is your routine duty as it in charge of the class or as someone given the charge of attending people who come as visitors for attaining knowledge. If you are just doing, doing it because you have to do it, then your stage is not that of a yogi or of a spiritualized person, then the satisfaction will not be the result of it. So therefore, the 16th, the last one which I mentioned, which is not the least important but the most one, is your sthiti, your stage. Now within the five minutes which are left, I will just be dealing with some of the factors that cause dissatisfaction. I had mentioned certain circumstances. So when I said knowledge full, have all this knowledge. Because to apply knowledge is also a knowledge. You have all the knowledge, okay. But how and when to apply what kind of knowledge is another knowledge. This is what I have given you in these 16 points which means the practical application of knowledge. This becomes then an art or it gives you power, then knowledge becomes a power. Like when we take food properly and the system absorbs it, then we feel energy and stamina. Similarly, you have the knowledge in you, but when you use it in this way and absorb it, apply it, then it becomes a power. Now, I will take up those, some of the circumstances, adverse circumstances which I had mentioned. I would not be able to take up the factors which arise from the self, but within this brief period of time, let me take up only the circumstances. The first one, for example, was health. Someone is ill, not able to do service. Now, Baba has given so many points on this. The other day also when Pardadi, Dadi Nirma Shanta was beating Bab Dada, because she is to be operated upon and therefore she was seeking Baba's advice and permission. So Baba was saying when you go to the hospital, think that it is the service center and when you are on the stretcher or on the bed, you think that you are on the stage. You know the teacher sits here in the morning at the Amrit Vela and gives Drishti. So at that time, she thinks she is on the, that Gaddi, you know, on that stage. So Baba said, don't think that it is the sick bed, bed for the sick, that you are a patient. But on the other hand, think that you are on stage giving drishti, doing Baba's glorification, work of that type. So, and Baba said, those souls who do not come to Baba's knowledge, when you go as a patient, they will come. They will become cooperative souls first, and then they become the yogis. First they become Sayyogi and then they become yogis. So you are really going on service. For some souls who have to come because of your illness, you are being in that hospital under their care, they will be the surgeons operating on you, but then they will feel how elevated you are and then they come close to Baba's knowledge. So think that you are going for Baba's service, not for because you are just to be operated upon. Similarly, when someone is in bed, even in the house, are at the center. Baba, think, Baba says you think that you now have more time to practice meditation. You know the other, just recently when both the dadis did not come to this place where they are in their rooms, Baba said most of the time people came to visit them, to meet them, discuss with them and they did not have much free time for just being concentrated in Baba's remembrance and so they have got this opportunity. 
So this ill health is not ill health. It is an opportunity for self-improvement, for keeping silent, for going deeper into meditation, for having that power, power of mind as Baba was saying. So think of that. And then Baba has been saying that you are settling your karmic accounts. Think of that. So on and so forth. So Baba has given so much. I have recounted only some of the points. If you think of those points, then you will not feel disappointed or dissatisfied that you are not able to do much because you don't have good health. The second is of age, for example. I said someone has infirmity or is of old age. Thinks that if he was young, he would be able to do service like Brother Ram Prakash, like other young people, but that he is an old person and can't do much. But Baba says old is gold. Shri Baba also came into the body of an old person. Old person is an experienced person. And when an old person speaks from the experience, say it is by maturity I am speaking. I am not a child. I have seen the whole world. And I am saying only after that. So when you say a certain thing, they will have credibility. So now why do you feel that you are old? So it has its own merits. One may be very small child, but in no sense, and that child age, we all say we are Baba's children. That in itself has its own merits. So we have to think in that term, then these are not the problems. We should give us some kind of a disappointment. On the other hand, we become all the more happy. The other was the monetary status, that I don't have much money. I am not a multimillionaire. So I can't build up this. I mean, I, I want to build up a big center or do other kinds of service. But what can I do? I have so many thoughts, so many desires, good desires for Baba service. But I don't have money. Baba says, I am Gharib Nivas. I, I love the poor. Even in the Bible it is mentioned, blessed are the poor. So if I am a poor person, I am not. my mind is not attached to so many worldly things. I am not money minded. I am not always counting money. I have this money notes and what more I am going to get. On the other hand, my mind is like a clean slate. I can just link it to Baba. And then Baba says, even if you give you see, a small money, that is equal to much, much higher in terms of money given by a rich man. Because if a multimillionaire gives millions of rupees, and if a young, I, I mean a poor person who has only, say, a few thousand in his bank, if he gives one thousand out of it, it's equal. Because of sacrifice, because of intention, and all that. Similarly, the family members. Baba says, these are the tests. They are putting you under test. If they were not criticizing you, not, not I mean, uh, if they were cooperating with you, then uh, you would not be so much watchful of your own self. You would not be checking yourself. So if they do this, then you should on the other hand be more watchful. Think of your own state. Check your state. Similarly other things. Om Shanti. Thank you so much.